I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 17th of May, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. We are filming on the road as we come through Hinotega on the main highway heading towards Matagalpa. We are going to be talking about what is there to do in Nicaragua? Are you going to be bored? <laughs> We've been out doing filming, we've been touring around, and honestly, we're staying pretty occupied. So it happens to be a really funny day for me to have received this question. But one of my viewers, I'm gonna to try to pop it up, I'm bad about that, but I've got lots of space because of the roof of the car, so I'm gonna to try to remember to put it up here. And he said, you know, I know that Nicaragua is safe and I know it's affordable and there's a lot of great things going for it, but my concern is, am I going to be bored? Is there really enough to do? And Honestly, this is a real question, right? Like this makes sense. Uh, my friend Alan, when he got here, this is something that he struggled with, that uh, the things that he's used to doing back home for him in the United States, uh, a lot of them are different here or don't exist. And so for him to go out and do things really requires finding new things that he wants to do. So they, that can be a challenge. Uh, but, you know, in general, I think Nicaraguans have plenty to do. So the question becomes uh, a couple things. One is, uh, what is it that you, so for you personally, to answer this question for anybody, what would you do at home? We'll assume you're from the United States because I am and it gives me context to speak of easily. What did you do for entertainment when you lived back home? And for a lot of people that I know, there's a number of things that they would go out and do, a number of activities, uh, but they also had a lot of time that they would spend at home, whether that's watching TV, working on projects in your house, uh, having hobbies that you do, whatever. Uh, and then they would go out a certain amount of time, maybe one day to four days a week, generally not more than that. Um, and even that's quite high. Commonly, it'd be very little. Uh, and what I find is, is that people, when they're looking at moving, are looking for a lot more entertainment than they had when they lived back home. So I think it's important to start with what would your life look like if you didn't move, but you did have the leisure time that Nicaragua may provide for you? Because I think that is one of the challenges is that likely moving to Nicaragua is going to give you a greater amount of leisure time than you are used to because things cost less. You don't have to spend as much time working. You don't have to deal with as many things and so forth. So you're, you're going to spend, we're going through a police stop as I say this. So I'm just going to pay a little bit of attention to the bumps in the road and the police who are watching me. Uh, and you can kind of see them. This is your chance to actually watch maybe out the windows, a police stop. Yes, <laughs> that dog is crazy. All right. Um, I wish we could turn the camera around and show you. We are driving high over Hinatega. It is absolutely beautiful. We, dr we did record this drive for my channel Drive Warp today, so hopefully that all got recorded and you'll be able to see it. Um, so really, I would say write that down. Get a real picture, because for me, when I lived in the United States, um, you know, I could say, well, you know, four nights a week, I'd be working late. And then when I was done, you know, I'd do dinner, might go out to eat, but we cooked at home a certain amount, a bit. And, uh, you know, of course, pre-COVID, don't, don't use COVID as your guideline unless you like what you adjusted to. And uh, then, you know, one or two nights a week, I might go out dancing. That was a regular thing that I did. Uh, I might go out and play Dungeons and Dragons with friends. That's a thing that I did. Uh, once in a while, we would just go to a random event or whatever, go to a gathering, go out to uh, a bar or, or, or show or something. But really, the going out was once, maybe twice a month, beyond my standard stuff of like going out dancing once or twice a week or whatever. So those kind of setting that that baseline. Okay, these are the things that I did. And then the rest of the time, what did you do? Okay, it was Netflix. It was it was watching sports on TV. It was, you know, going out to dinner, uh, activities at home or whatever. Figure that out and get a picture and then determine is that what you did because you had to or is that because what you liked, right? Just because it's what you did does not mean you want to keep doing it. But just because you're moving doesn't mean you want to give it up necessarily. So there's a lot that you have to answer personally. Now, take that list, and that list is what you have to ask against Nicaragua. If you liked going out dancing, can you do that in Nicaragua? 
Yes. If you like going to restaurants, can you do that in Nicaragua? Yes. If you like going to play D&D, it's going to be a lot harder. Finding a group is not going to be super easy, but can you? We do. We have a D&D group. We play here, uh, well, in Leon, not here in Hinotega. Uh, you'll likely be able to find someone there uh, that will play wherever you end up. And if you don't, well, you can do it online. So there's, there's probably an opportunity for you there as well. So a lot of things you're going to have options. That's where we came before. Now we're heading to Madagalpa. Right. And this road is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to be able to film it. It's going to be a little bit dark anyway, but it's going to be absolutely fantastic to watch. Anyway. We'll have a video of your face being like... <gasps> <gasps> yeah. <laughs> what is this? Nice. That is beautiful. Is it okay. Hotel? Yeah, it's got to be. Get the name. Del Deli Burrito, Burrito on the, on the road. road. Deli Burrito on the road? <laughs> that sounds so cool. I don't want to go. Well, yeah. Should we turn around? Yeah. Oh my gosh, okay. How can you do that here? I don't know. <laughs> That's not possible. <laughs> so once you've determined what you have been doing and whether those things can simply continue in Nicaragua, if you can just take all those things that you used to do and do them in Nicaragua, then you're in great shape. You can keep doing whatever you were and improve it in potentially a few different ways. And one of the things that's really important to remember is if there's things you liked back home that I mentioned, things that we know are commonly available in Nicaragua, for example, restaurants and bars and dancing, all of those things are going to be cheaper than they were in the United States. So for most people, we are constrained in some way by the cost of activities. Maybe we could afford to do it more, but it's expensive and it's not a decision we want to make. In Nicaragua, those activities are going to be dramatically cheaper. Uh, in many cases, going out dancing is free. Uh, going to a bar may be two or three dollars of drinks rather than 20 or 30 dollars worth of drinks. The numbers are very different, not just a little bit different. And uh, so because of those things, you may be able to go out and do those activities five or six times a week rather than once or twice. Uh, and that alone may, may really shift things for you if that's something that you want to do. Um, also worth mentioning, live music is very plentiful. If you want to go see big concerts, no, that's something that's going to be extremely hard to do. But if you want to go see live music, that's going to be very, very easy. So easy you will stumble into it on a regular basis. But it's also worth noting that Nicaragua is easily connected to a lot of other countries. If you're in a position where traveling is easy for you, hopping on a bus uh, or driving yourself or whatever, then getting to Costa Rica, El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, and Panama, which are all pretty close, or taking a short flight to Mexico, all put major concerts well within your reach again, because all those locations have them. So that is something you could do, but it does require quite a bit of additional travel. And that may sound like, well, that's a lot of cost for going to a concert. But remember, even in those countries, big name concerts are probably going to be just a tad cheaper than they are in the United States. Not a lot. If you're going to see Def Leppard playing in Bogota or you're going to see them play in Denver, the difference in price may be 10 or 20 percent. It's not going to be very much. Uh, but that that gives a little bit of an offset to help pay for that flight or that hotel room or whatever. Then you can make a little bit of a trip out of it. So overall, you might pay more, but your life in Nicaragua is going to cost so much less that you have a lot bigger entertainment budget. So you can look at it that way and potentially spend it like that as well. And that goes for general travel as well. Travel may be maybe harder to go to a city that's 10 hours away, but you have the budget to do so because your housing is a quarter of the cost. So then there's all the activities that you decide you cannot do in Nicaragua. This is going to be a tough list because most things can be done, but not all. There's certainly going to be things that you may like to do that are going to be missing. Okay, those you'll simply have to replace that's going to be very much a personal decision, whether those things are, are things you are okay replacing, and uh, if they are uh, things that there is an adequate replacement for you. And that's very personal. I don't know how I can answer that if, uh, if I know specifically, if anybody wants to, you know, get down in the comments and let me know what specific things you want to know can you do or whatever um let's let's talk about that let's come up with ideas let's brainstorm um because i think there's a lot to do in nicaragua i think overall the the 
nature of Nicaraguan culture is one of going out and doing things. It's very social, it's very active, and it's also a country that has a lot of just general freedom. So if you like bicycling or road tripping or sightseeing, being a photographer, uh, amateur, you know, bird watching, well, while those things may not be very well established in some cases, you may not have a club to join to do it, your ability to go do it is going to be very high. You can just go out and do it. And again, everything is cheaper than you're used to, almost everything. And so that means that, that there's potentially a lot of capability to make up whatever differences you need. You're really into bird watching, but uh, you used to spend a lot of money going out and doing bird watching, but not very much on a camera. Well, now it's cheap to go out. You're gonna have to spend more on a camera because they're a little bit more difficult to get here. You'll have to take a trip to the States to pick it up probably. So today is a really interesting time to have gotten this question because we were out doing a road trip, simply coming to Hinotega to look around and do some filming, just very general stuff. And I'm gonna let the next segment speak for itself because I think this, while this particular segment may not for a lot of viewers be something you have any interest in whatsoever, I think it showcases how much diversity exists within Nicaragua. We just watched someone lean completely out of a bus and throw an empty bottle under the wheels of the bus. Like completely risky to falling out of the bus so that he could watch an empty 20 ounce soda bottle bounce under the bus wheels. That was so weird. The incredible diversity that exists in Nicaraguan culture and the kinds of activities that do exist that no one is going to talk about because no tourist is interested in normal activities. And a great example of what I mean is Nicaragua has movie theaters. It also has bowling alleys and laser tag. All of these things exist here. And that shouldn't be too surprising if someone challenged you, is there bowling in Nicaragua? You'd probably go, well, I would imagine probably, but I didn't think about it. So that exists. But when you're talking to tourists, hey, have you ever been bowling in Nicaragua? They're gonna be like, no, why would I have been bowling in Nicaragua? Where would I go? I don't know anything about that. Well, of course not because you're a tourist and why would you be interested in bowling? That's a thing you could do anywhere. Um, so we just managed to get past the bus. That was, that was crazy. Um, so a lot of those normal activities, just going to the movie theater to see a movie, the movie theater here in Leon, here where we live in Leon, is great. It's comfortable. It's cheap. It's air conditioned. They show nice movies. It's first run movies. Like everything is good. It's exactly what you would want from a movie theater for most of us. It's perfect. In fact, it's far better than the United States for movies because the movies cost half as much or less. The food costs a quarter as much. Honestly, I think the theater's nicer than most of the ones I've been to in the United States. I guess they've probably improved a bit since the last time I went, so maybe that's going too far. But it's a really nice theater. I enjoy the theater experience in Nicaragua better than I enjoy the theater experience in the United States. Partially because I just don't feel like I've wasted so much money going and then I can enjoy it better. There's far less buyer's remorse. So that stuff is really, I think, perfect and an example of no one's going to talk about it, no tourist is going to do it, and even a lot of expats who live here are not never going to have bothered going to the movie theater. I don't go to the movie theater back home in the United States, so I would never have thought about doing it here until friends invited us and we went and we had a really nice time. Uh, so that kind of stuff, it's important to understand it exists. And that's what I mean when I say that there are all these things that exist in Nicaragua culture. And you may just not be aware of them. Sorry, the camera died while we were driving. We got stuck on a really slow road behind a truck for an extremely long amount of time. And the battery died uh, while we were, like, we just couldn't handle it uh, while doing that road. And then the light got dark. So moving on, I'm going to jump to uh, our adventure today. So in talking about this, the timing is perfect because this that you're about to see is what we stumbled on randomly on the day that this question was asked. We were just driving. We wanted to go see some water. This is what we found. Apenas. Apenas. All right, we drove north out of Hinotega, hoping to make it to Lake Apenas. And uh, we came up the road and kind of just followed the signs and we meant to take the highway and we didn't. And somehow we ended up going down a really rough dirt road that seemed kind of abandoned, but then there were a lot of people on it and then they made us pay 
30 Cordobas, which is less than a dollar. And oh my gosh, we found the big, giant, unbelievable lake party. There are so many people out here on the lake. We are ready to boogie here. We're just, we're, I don't know what's going on. We're walking in to see. There are so many people. There's so much going on. There's loud music and this is crazy. So we're really excited that we just stumbled on this. This is so cool. I've heard that there was stuff that went on up here, but I thought it was like, you know, 20, 30 people came up here. This is huge. I, I don't even know how deep this parking lot goes. This is nuts. And we are definitely the only extra and heroes here. People are coming by nearly falling off their motorcycles when they see us. Like, what are we doing here? This is crazy. I got to put this way up in the air. Hopefully you can see what this is like. There's a stage. There's events going on. I've never seen anything like this in Nicaragua. There's a Taco Express. How the hell did we end up here? Yes. This is really exciting, stumbling upon this 4x4 event. Uh, we really need to follow the in-tour, that's the Department of Tourism, uh, like Twitter feeds better because they really do announce this stuff and that's how people are finding out about it and every time we're like, how do people know? But that's actually how people know. Like, I looked later and there it was, as plain as could be. Uh, and there's another, like, just uh, two days ago, uh, was a uh, dirt bike motocross event in Granada. So things like this are happening all over the country. But I did want to take you guys out here and show we, you know, we came up here for the lake, not for this 4x4 event. And this lake is really cool. It's a very shallow lake. It's a man-made lake. This is uh, part of the hydroelectric project that provides a ton of the power to the region. Uh, it's very important for that reason. Uh, so this is a very shallow lake. It's it's quite a bit different than what you're going to find in other parts of the country. And it's pretty high in the mountains. Uh, and it, it is a pretty popular destination for people in the mountains because having a lake is new and pretty unique. You don't tend to get big lakes like this uh, that you can go to. And I, I believe you can just go motorboating on this and stuff. Like I, I think it's pretty accessible. It's not uh, because it's it's hydroelectric and not a natural ecosystem. They don't protect it from from use in that kind of way so this was this was a very cool thing to just have stumbled on and a really nice location for us to have explored uh, and we really wished we would have had more time for it but as to our our more general discussion about are there things to do i think for almost everyone 
you can really safely say if you're putting in the time to look things up and you're willing to, to make some amount of modifications to your life. And if you're moving to another country, if you're coming for a long time to a place like Nicaragua, which is almost certainly dramatically different or exotic compared to uh, your uh, previous experiences, then I think you, you probably have that mindset of some change is acceptable and modifying is acceptable to get more of what you really want. And with that mindset, I think that um, almost any place is going to be okay. Uh, Nicaragua, though, especially, there is such a culture of going out and such an accessibility of the kinds of things you're used to uh, that you're going to find ways, especially if you speak or take the time to learn Spanish and push yourself to uh, get to know uh, your neighbors and get to know people around the country uh, and, and things are a bit different uh, and, and just make those adaptations and, and put in the effort to really get involved and know people and go out when they say, hey, let's go do a thing or you go find things and say, hey, let's go investigate this thing. Let's try something different. That's going to give you great rewards as it has for us. I think that was a perfect example. Lakefront, picnicking, going to the water, uh, hanging out by the shore, and four by four dirt track racing in the mountains. Like these are normal activities or fun activities you would do in the United States too. And they exist here in Nicaragua, but tourists aren't doing it because they're here to see something unique about Nicaragua. That's what they're gonna talk about. That's what they're excited about. That's why they're putting in the effort of getting here as a tourist. But those of us who live here, those of us who are putting in all of our time, we wanna see more of the country and being able to go do, if it's dirt track racing that you enjoyed or would enjoy back home, come enjoy it here. Maybe we don't do it as often, but we do it. Do you like just going to the lake with the family and you know going fishing or hanging out by the shore, or picnicking or going for a walk? You can do that here too, up in the mountains, down by the ocean, you name it, we have it. I think for most people you're going to find that Nicaragua has a lot, a lot of wonderful activities that are gonna mimic things that you did before or exactly replicate them or improve on them. And you're going to find a few things that are not what you're, what you, you're gonna miss them, right? You're gonna find a few things missing and it's probably okay, but, but make a list. Think about what you really do day to day and if it's not a list you can just fill out yourself, which I expect you probably can't. If you were to ask about bowling, for example, and you said, well, I bet they have bowling, but I don't know. Post a question, get down there in those comments, ask away. And if I don't know, I bet someone does. And another great example, billiards. They're all over the place here. Do you like to shoot pool? I'm not a big pool player, but you can go do billiards all over the place or ping pong or darts. Lots of things that people do back home, you just, you just don't think about it here because why would you? You're here to do something unique. But yeah, for those of us who are expats, we want all that stuff again. We don't wanna give up the things we've enjoyed for so much of our lives just because we're in a new location. You probably don't have to. So yeah, get down there in the comments. So start with a list, make a list of the things that, that you care about. Then, you know, if people wanna send them in, let's do a comparison. What I think you'll be able to do one versus the other and, and give some opinion on it. Uh, because I've done a lot of that and certainly some things are better or worse or just a little bit different. And I think even if we don't hit everybody's examples, having a few and going through it, what's Netflix like here versus there? What are video games like here versus there? What are billiards here versus there? That kind of thing. Uh, give you a picture of what you might be able to expect and apply it to other things or know what's worth asking. But definitely get down there in the comments. And even if nothing else, just leave, leave a comment, say hi. Love all the conversation down there. But if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. I'm going to put up a link right here, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me and is the biggest way to support and make the channel possible. But whether you can do that or not, please like and subscribe. That helps us grow the channel. It tells YouTube to share this with other people. If you have watched this show, but you don't watch my shorts, take a moment and pop, go to the main page, right? YouTube.com slash Scott L. Miller vlog and go to the shorts. There's a lot of interesting stuff there. We show a lot of additional things that, that are going on compared to just what's here in the long format. Very different format, very just here we are, different places, talking, answering really quick questions. Uh, uh, we get a, two very different audiences, but if you're into this, 
take a moment, go like those. Each time you do that, it helps make YouTube aware that this is a channel you care about and that maybe other people will care about. Same thing with those comments. Every comment helps inform YouTube that this matters. So likes, comments, coffees, and if you're interested in direct assistance, even if it's just you want to have a phone call, sit down for an hour and, and ask questions directly, shoot me an email. It's info at relocatenicaragua.com. I'd be happy to, uh, to work out something for you there. And as always, share on social media, tell your friends about the show, Get the word out there about Central America, about Nicaragua, about just traveling, getting out all the exciting things you can do when you live abroad. There's a lot more to do out there than people realize. Come down and check out racing in Nicaragua. Who knew that was a big thing? I will see all of you tomorrow. <laughs>